Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be my April wrap up part two. I read pretty much no physical books in the second half of April um, except the cookbook that I showed you last week. I did read several books for the Disability Readathon this month. Uh, we'll start with those. I also read some monster romances that I got as part of a um, plus sized stuff your kindle type event where a bunch of plus size authors writing about plus size characters uh, were giving out free copies of their ebooks and then a little rabbit trail led me to another book but i will get to that in a moment first let's start with uh disability and chronic illness i read sick a memoir by porakista kakpur unfortunately i ended up giving this one two stars and I have notes. Um, dang it. I was really looking forward to this one because I have chronic illness and this author has Lyme and it's a lot about her diagnosis journey and coming to figure out that she has Lyme and having felt for a lot of her life that something was wrong. Um, and there's things of doctors not believing you and other people not believing you but also a lot of people being your support and relying on other people and that was all great unfortunately there were a few decisions made about how the narrative was told that caused me to really not enjoy my time reading uh and be kind of confused by a lot of it so for one in the author's note the uh author talked about making the narrative just about her after trying a few different narrative styles and what subjects she wanted to talk about. I think part of that is what made the relationships that are a big part of the narrative because a lot of the book is about her relying on other people um, made those relationships feel very shallow and confusing. Uh, very little detail of personality were given about the various important people in the author's life which made it feel like the only thing she liked about them was that they took care of her. I don't think this was the case in real life, but it came across that way in the narrative. Um, I think some of that may have been an attempt to protect the privacy of these people, but unfortunately that combined with how she portrayed herself treating them made her look like a massive jerk. Secondly, the non-linear timeline uh, was not helpful in any way and in my opinion actually detracted from an already confusing story. Overall the story felt very self-pitying and self-absorbed which is odd because the author's note didn't feel that way at all. There was a huge tonal shift between the main text and the author's note which is weird in a memoir. Like most other memoirs I write like it is the same tone and voice from the text to the author's note. In the author's note, it much more came across that she actually cared about the people in her life as people. When I went to Goodreads to check out the reviews, see if I was the only one who felt this way, I found that indeed I was not the only person who felt this way. Uh, and that kind of uh, made me feel better about it. I think partly it was the author's brain fog that led to a lot of the confusingness and the problems with how things came across. Uh, as well as various other symptoms taking a toll, like chronic fatigue makes it difficult to write. I know this as I have chronic fatigue and I write. But the editing was also subpar. I got from the author's note that the book was passed on between multiple editors and I think it maybe ended up with the editor who really did not care and just wanted to get it published. I really think that a passionate editor could have saved the book. They could have fixed the timeline thing for one and I think they could have really helped fix the way she described other people. Then we have The Silence Between Us. I had somehow heard somewhere that this was not Own Voices, but it is. It's by a, a deaf author and it is about a deaf girl going to hearing school for the first time. She's been at a deaf school um, pretty much all her life. She knows sign language fluently um, and it is about her making new friends at this school learning not to judge people quite so quickly because she is very judgy at the beginning of the book. Yeah, figuring out how to navigate the hearing world, fighting for accessibility, and her experience with interpreters. Uh, also her feelings on co co cochlear implants. Um, 
which are a hot topic within the deaf community and extended onto the deaf community, the community of parents of deaf children who are not deaf themselves. Um, because those are the people most likely to get their kids a cochlear implant. The book doesn't get into all of that too deeply. It mostly frames it as a personal choice, um, which obviously is complicated by the fact that a lot of a lot in a lot of cases the parents are making the decision. Our main character is 16, I think, and does not want one. Her parents are both hearing and uh, learned sign language pretty quickly to be able to communicate with her. I think this character only has a mom, the dad's not in the picture. They're divorced, but the dad's like totally not in the picture. And I don't even know if he pays child support because they sound like they're financially strapped. Also, the character's brother has CFS. It's a thing that makes it difficult to breathe. I'm, I was familiar with it when I was listening to it, but now I can't remember what it was. Um, but he needs a lot of intervention with that. And there is some parentification of our main character um, and there's nothing really to be done about it because her mom has to work so much that, um, it is difficult for her to be able to fully care for this high medical needs kid. And our main character has dreams of being a breathing specialist. There's a word for that as well, but I have once again forgotten it. Anyway, I thought it was really good. I gave it four stars. Then we have Where You See Yourself, which I found by um, going through the what you might like. Readers also enjoyed these books on Goodreads. And this is both written by an author who uses a wheelchair. And as I was listening to the audiobook, I got to listen to the um, interview between the author and the narrator at the end of the audiobook that is all about the narrator also being a wheelchair user and them talking back and forth about how disability representation is important to them and like how one became an author and the other became a voice actor stuff like that so that was really interesting and i enjoyed that one thing about the audiobook that is unfortunate though is that i did find the narrator's voice kind of annoying it was nasal a lot of the time uh but listening to the the interview at the end that's just that narrator's voice it wasn't she wasn't putting it on or anything this one is about a much less militant minded disabled 17 year old um she has had her mom do most of her advocating for most of her life and hasn't done it herself and this is kind of about her learning to do it herself it's about her applying to colleges and having to look into not just what colleges have a program she's interested in but whether they are accessible and it is about her high school being inaccessible and her trying to find ways to uh work for that and generally people being really annoying ableist the uh last book i mentioned has a little romance in it this one does too i like this romance a little bit better it was super cute and yeah i had a really lovely time with it uh, four stars again. Then another one that got recommended after I read that one was Res Ball, which, uh, does not have a disabled main character. This has a, uh, indigenous main character. I don't remember what nation he's from, but he loves basketball and he lost his brother to, um, a car accident a couple years before this starts. And his parents did not handle that well he has also had a very hard time processing it and like he can't bring it up in front of his parents or they just shut down basically. This is about him sort of stepping into his brother's shoes. His brother was a great basketball player and now he is joining the varsity team at his high school and is going to try to help them get to the state championships, which they have never won they've never they might have gotten to them before but they've never won and they haven't gotten to them in a long time so he is trying to get them there and win the state championship he would also like to play for the nba when he grows up um but he feels like that's too big of a thing to even say to anyone because people from his res generally don't go on to play um even uh college basketball because a lot of colleges won't 
ask them to do so. It's also about him being super hormonal and making friends with a girl and then having a crush on her and um, being immature. Also a lot of immaturity around drinking things that you shouldn't be drinking when you are a minor very peer pressure-y. Having like the whole reservation's hopes be pinned on him and his team is a lot of pressure to put on a little hormonal 16 year old. He might even have been 15. He's just a little kid. And then of course also having to deal with his brother's death and his parents' reactions to his brother's death. So this kid had a lot to deal with and I think ultimately he bore up under it pretty well and I ended up really enjoying it. I also really enjoyed the author's note on this one as well. So I gave it four stars. Then I skipped over one of the disability ones. Anger is a gift I found in my disability visibility section of my library's Libby app. Um, and this one is about a character who has anxiety and anxiety attacks or pretty much panic attacks which are worse than anxiety attacks. His father was killed by police. Um, when he was 10 I think and he's a teenager now. He's black, his family is black. This is all about student and community movements, anti-police, anti-authoritarian uh, and fascist. Yeah it's about the school adding metal detectors in response to a students not being okay with other students being beat up by the cop who is a resident cop at the school and yeah basically the school just bearing down harder and harder whenever the students say that what's already being done is not okay. Very uh appropriate for the current time. This one was very dark, had some elements in it that I really don't like to have in books. Um, so if you know my taste and you have very similar tastes probably not for you. I can't get any more into that without spoilers so I will put that information down in the trigger warnings um, that will be at the very bottom of the description. There's a lot of great stuff about organizing in here but it was very sad and heartbreaking and would be triggering for a lot of people. It also talks about generational, um, intergenerational organizing where like your mom, the main character's mom was an organizer and she has a whole generation of organizers around her and they are like teaching the next generation and um, backing up the next generation. So that was, um, I really liked that part. 3.5 stars to that one. Then we have my two monster romances, both with plus size uh, lady main characters. Bound by the Basilisk is a novella and uh it was pretty nice i felt like the relationship could have been dived into more and it could have been a bit longer book um but it is about a sex worker who falls in love with one of her new clients and he's a basilisk and um monsters are like out and about in this world and uh, humans know about them i fairly well enjoyed the spicy scenes generally thought it was well done but yeah some things were kind of skipped over that i felt could have been developed more uh so i gave it 3.5 stars and then sweet vengeance i absolutely loved this one was great um i love the spicy scenes i love the development of the relationship it felt like this was the appropriate amount of time for that relationship and uh, this one also has a lot of trigger warnings because the main character was sexually assaulted and the whole story is about her getting revenge. Um, vigilante justice is highly encouraged by this book and the concept is that our main character is summoning a demon to help her cover up the fact that she is getting their revenge and they start being attracted to each other and falling in love her and the demon I mean and she's very scared to have a relationship. He is a giant sweetheart who um, has escaped a really bad situation with his demon I think they call it a sect. Yeah oh it's also set in Nigeria and is by a Nigerian author. Yeah there's not too much to say about it because it's pretty short but I just really really liked it. So those are all the books that I read. Um, thank you so much for watching. Even though my giveaway is over, I am still raising support for this family with a kid who has osteomalacia in Gaza and they are trying to get out. 
probably in the description of this I will have who the winner was because it is uh, the, sh the giveaway is ending today um, so I should have that information by tomorrow um, and uh, we did manage to reach uh, at least so far $60 donated so I will be sending out all of the prizes uh, so that's exciting I'm really happy that uh, I was able to raise that much um, I will be also giving some myself as I have just recently gotten a paycheck so that's exciting too and uh, yeah I'm really and also this family has had quite a few other unrelated donations so they are getting a little bit closer to their goal so that's really exciting um, so let's get them all the way thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye